my name is Greg Helbeck, and welcome to this week's REI Deal Breakdown. And today I'm going to talk about 42 Keats, I think, wrote in Meriden, Connecticut. I'm going to tell you how do we find the deal? What did we make on the deal? And what are some lessons you can learn from this deal so you can hopefully do more deals if you're new or do deals if you're new or if you're established, do more deals and grow your business. So if you're not familiar with me, my name is Greg Helbeck. I'm a millionaire real estate investor. I've been doing this business for almost eight years now. I've done well over 150 deals. And the goal of this channel and this podcast is to just provide value for the masses so they can listen, watch, listen to or watch this and take away the lessons and apply it in their business. So 42 Keats wrote, we found this deal through direct mail. The list that we targeted was a pre-probate list. So basically inherited properties. That's the gist of it. So we've been mailing that list for years. Somebody called, they inherited a property. They didn't want to deal with it. I had really no involvement with the seller. I had to just tell my acquisitions guy, Brett, how much we needed to offer. And he pretty much took the deal at that point. There was a little bit of back and forth in the negotiation. What I can remember, there was a little bit of haggling. The guy was a little stubborn. And I think we originally made him the offer. He declined it. Some other contractor offered him more. So we thought the deal wasn't going to work out. That contractor didn't perform. So he came back to us and we told him the offer we needed to be at. He accepted it. We signed a contract, took it over to the attorney in this case in Connecticut. And we locked it up, opened the file, went out. And my boy, Rich Pace and I actually, we did this deal together as we partner on that specific mailing campaign. And he found a buyer within like a week. The spread on this thing was around 14, I was about $12,000 because I had to pay some sort of transfer tax. Made about $12,000 on this deal, which isn't the greatest, but hey, listen, you can't go broke making a profit. So I believe we double closed this deal. We did not assign it. So we actually bought the house, took title and resold the house the same day to the buyer. I think we used the buyer's money if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember ever sending any money to buy that house. So what are some lessons that you can take from this deal? Number one, Direct mail works, right? Direct mail is how we get probably a third of our deals, maybe even more at this point. I have to go check. It works, it works, it works, it works, it works. But it only works if you consistently mail people. If we just did one-off mailings to people, we'd be toasted. But we are mailing people consistently and persistently. And we've been mailing this list for years. And you never know when they're going to do the deal with you. But if you mail them consistently, you're going to get calls. Some of those calls are going to be leads. Some of those leads are going to turn into deals and those deals will turn into money in your bank account. So you have to do direct mail if you have the budget and you've got to do it consistently. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, sometimes it's not bad to partner with people. Richie approached me about this mailing campaign well over a year ago. And I said, sure, man, let's do this campaign, only this campaign. And we're not like actual business partners, but we just JV these deals we get from this mailing campaign and it's, you know, benefits both of us. So he did the, all the work for the buyer. Brett did pretty much all the work for the seller. I didn't really do much at the end of the day, but still made some money on it. So I guess the, the real lesson in this case would be don't be afraid to JV with people on a case-by-case -case basis or on a per campaign basis. It can benefit both parties and you might make half the profit, but you're doing half the work. So it can definitely benefit you. So consider JVing if you think it will benefit you. And then lesson number three, I never saw this house. I never met the seller. I don't even know who the buyer is. I had minimal, minimal, minimal involvement in this deal. And I probably ended up netting after paying the commissions and everything to the sales team and stuff. I probably netted five grand and I really didn't do anything, which is it bad, you know, not bad. So you can't go broke making a profit. As I say, this business can be done 100% virtual, especially if you're wholesaling. You can do this business remotely anywhere in the country without ever having to see houses. I literally do virtual deals on a weekly basis. Never see the house, never meet the seller, never meet the buyer. It's amazing. So with technology and the way things are now, you can do this business virtually, especially wholesaling. It's super possible. And especially if you're in a tough market, like if you live in the Bay Area and you don't wanna like invest in million dollar properties, you can wholesale from the Bay Area into Oklahoma or wherever you wanna go. So hopefully you got value from this video. If you did, Leave me a review on iTunes and Spotify, wherever you listen to the show. Like the video on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to do a JV deal with me, if you want to partner with me, just like I partnered with Richie on this one, send me an email, greg at velocityhousebuyers.com. Send me a text, or if you don't know me that well, send me an email or send me an Instagram message at grego37. Hope you got value from this video. I will see you on the next REI Deal Breakdown. Take care.